uh, what I want to talk about is about economic transition and income equality in China. So I will focus on three yeah, topics. Uh, firstly is that I will present some you say, evidence on the features, changes in the income equality in China in the past three decades. The second issue is how to explain the rising income equality in China. The last one, I will talk about some of the policy recommendations for you say, reducing income equality in China. So, uh, so when I come to the conference, you see a lot of people ask me, how is the income equality in China? Is it still rising or not? So I will say that income equality has been risen in all the aspects. They have been rising in the urban area, also rising in the rural area, and the rising in the China as a whole. Yeah. So let me give you some evidence to say that. So in the urban China, you will see this picture that is Gini coefficient of the income equality. So from the <coughs> beginning of economic reform yeah, to the last two years, yeah. so you will see that the Gini coefficient in urban areas have been rising yeah, over time. Uh, the Gini increased from 0 0.15 in the <coughs> 78 and to the 0 0.35 in the 2011. So also, if you want to calculate the income ratios of the top desire to the bottom desire, you will see that is, uh, the ratio increased significantly yeah, in urban area. Uh, you will find same patterns yeah, in the rural areas. You see Gini increased from 0 0.2 <coughs> at the end of 70 to the 0 point almost four, yeah, <coughs> in the 2011. So also the income ratio of top desire to the bottom desire increased magnificantly, you see. Uh, that is the income equality in the rural and the urban areas. Yeah, let's come to the China as whole. Uh, for the Gini coefficient, it was that it was uh, 0 0.4, the less than 4 in <coughs> 88. Now you're close to, you say, 0 0.48, something like that. Uh, income ratios of the top <coughs> desire to the bottom desire, yeah, increased from <coughs> 13 times in 88 to the 23 times in 2007, yeah. So that is the figure, you will see that. That comes with a different estimate. Some yeah, estimate come from the World Bank, and some estimate come from National Bureau of Statistics, you see. So if you just look at the changes in the Gini in the last three years, you will find that to be slightly decreased yeah, in the last three years. So that is come to the questions, how we should assess the recent trend of the income equality. The weather, the China, is reaching the Kuznets turning point, or the China is reaching the turning turning period, not a point, it's a period. So also has some yeah, 
uh, argument by some report published in China. Some, but in my opinion, it's hard to say that China is reaching to Kuznets point. I still think that China is still in the stage of rising income inequality. Yeah. Why? So that depend. That were concerned about how we should, you say, <coughs> assess how large income equality in China. Now. So whether you say income equality is rising or falling, that will depend on your know, several, you say, elements that. The first is that how you define household income. You say the different aspect, use the difference, the definition of household income. Or the second, the issues is related to the rural, urban, the migrants include or not. Because the large the size of rural migrants live in urban areas. Even SSBs estimate they do not include you say rural migrants as urban populations. That may lead to underestimate the Gini coefficient. The third one that we know that all the estimates of the Gini or income equality index were based on you say, the samples, the household samples. So the weights is very important. You use the different weights, you will get a different result. The last issue is about whether you will be used the regional PPP or not. Because the living cost in rural is much cheaper than in the urban area. Its living cost is high in the coastal area than in the western area. So that means if we want to get comparable the income definitions, perhaps we should use the PPP to make some adjustment. So, so when we want to consider <coughs> these yeah, elements, so we will get the, you say, different estimate. So we estimate the GE by using the difference, the household definition, also use the different weights. Also, we <coughs> uh, include or exclude the rural migrants in the yeah. So then we get, you see, the difference estimate for the Gini coefficient. So also, yeah, when we use the PPP, I should mention the the PPP index innovated by Lauren Brand and his colleagues. So we use that. To, also, we get the say, difference yeah, estimate. So to sum up, you see, the result we got it from our estimations, we will find that if we do not use the original, the PPP, so we will get uh, the Gini coefficient, a range from 0 0.47 to 0 0.45. So if we use the PPP, yeah, regional PPP, we will get lower the Gini coefficient. So that means if we find, you see, some slight increase in the Gini coefficient in recent years, we cannot make a judgment whether that increase is real or not, that it will depend on how you estimate the Gini coefficient. Yeah. So, but in the long term, the China has facing the rising income inequality. There's uh, no doubt about that. Uh, my second, uh, yeah, the topic is that how to explain the rising income inequality. I will focus on the four, you see, the elements that. The first is that 
there are some significant difference of the income between urban and rural area. The second is that is some regional, some in mobility and the monopoly in economic sectors that will be explained, some large is the difference. The third one is that the rising returns to education. That means income gap between unskilled work and skilled work have been increasing over time. The last one is corruption that is related to the rising income inequality, also related to is the income equity, the issues. Uh, so when we yeah, talk about the income equality, usually we like to let's say, talk income equality in rural area and urban area separately, because China has been <coughs> the country with big rural and urban divided. So in the you say past uh, you say fifty years you say uh, there's a difference. The policies have been implemented for rural and for urban area. So that means uh, there are some significant difference between the urban and the rural areas in terms of the income and the social security and the public service access or reflecting the government policy and the political institutions discriminating against the rural peoples. So, uh, so it's still very large, the income gap between rural and urban households. Also, yeah, the big income gap between rural and urban areas and the urban areas play a very important role in explaining the rising income equality in China as a whole. Yeah. You see, first just look at the income gap yeah, between rural and the urban households. In the last three decades, you will find you see, there are some fluctuations, but since 1970, 1977, you will find your urban and rural income gap have been rising, yeah. But just till the 2010, in the last three years, there's some slight difference, but the level is still very high. So when we talk about the importance of rural and urban income gap in the China as whole, yeah, you can do some decomposition, yeah. That if we yeah, uh, do the tail in uh, decomposition, we will find importance of the you know, say proportion of the rural <coughs> and the urban the gap in the total in, inequality has been rising yeah, from 88 to 2007. Yeah. You see, at this moment, you, see, you will find the income gap between rural and urban expand yeah, over 50% of the total income inequality in China as a whole. You see. Also, you can use the different method to decompose the total inequality into with the and between the rural areas. You see, when the method is based on, you see, decomposition of a genie and the, yeah, and the regression analysis. In the 2002, you see, control other variables, you will find the rural and the urban divider explain about near the 40% of the total income equality in China. Uh, so, the second element related to the rising income equality yeah, is about uncompleted the market reforms. I will say that that is when yeah, <coughs> uh, yeah, inequality is about rising uh, regional 
uh, disparities. Yeah, China's Yahoo uh, countries, the large regional difference between east and the west areas. Yeah, you, you will see that the coefficient of variation of the household income per capita among the, the provinces have been rising, yeah, particularly in the 90s. But recently, it has been slightly, slightly decreased. Uh, if you just look at the regional inequality at the lower level, at the city level, you will find, you see, the monthly wage at the different cities is so big, indeed. At the lower, <coughs> yeah, the city with the lower wages is about 500. The high wages is three or four times higher than the lower cities. Uh, also, you can do some decomposition based on regression analysis that the provincial diamonds can explain 10 to 12 percentage point for urban inequality in 2002. So that means the regional yeah, inequality is playing a very important role. Yeah. So also, yeah, when we come to, you see, uh, the wage difference, between different economic sectors. You see, monopolistic sectors have high the income and the wages. Yeah. If you compare some monopoly sectors, like uh, the banking and the insurance company, like uh, some public uh, sectors, compared to manufacturing, you will find the relative wage have been increased significantly. Yeah. Yeah, over <coughs> times, yeah. So also, if you try to do some decomposition, you will find monopoly sector and the competitive sector. You will find, you see, segmentation. You have become more and more important in explain the original, uh, no sector, sectoral, the income inequality. So, so also. The third element related to the rising income inequality is returns to education have been recent. Even with the expansion of the higher education, you will find return to education increased over time that will lead to the rising the income, the gap between skill and unskilled works. So also in some decomposition the analysis indicated, you say, uh, education play more and more important role in explaining the rising yeah, income equality in urban areas. Now, when we come to corruption and inequality, there are a lot of questions which I cannot answer. Why? Because we do not have the data to show how large inequality can be explained by, by corruption. But there are no doubt, you see, corruption it will increase in income equality. But how large it will be is still a mystery. So we still should do the more research on this issue. Yeah. Uh, finally, what kinds of policy are, yeah, recommendations? You see, I proposed the number of yeah, policies for the Chinese government. Some of the, you see, the policy recommendations have been accepted by the government. Yeah, some yeah, new policy have been implemented to, to reduce the income equality. But how it will be effect, that will yeah, depend on yeah, how yeah, a stress of the policy, how you say <coughs> deeply the policy will be involved. You say that will, yeah, find, perhaps we can find some evidence in the near future. So, some to, I should finish here. Thank you. Thank you very much.